Good morning. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Or afternoon or evening, depending on where you are. Um, so I uh, got uh, .com in my namesake, Jules Watchman, .com. Put it right here. Boink! Um, and added uh, my vlog blog to it, which I thought would be kind of cool. Um, I'll still upload my stuff to YouTube and I'm adding it to WordPress, but then it will all be funneled through um, that website, so that'd be cool. Yes, it's obnoxious and vain to have a website in your own name, but <laughs> oh well. It's a professional. It's my stage name. Um, so, uh, uh, yeah, so that's cool. So, oh, it'll be one place now, because before it was like, you know, it's on YouTube, it's on WordPress. Get, and I can't get comments in both places, which is kind of weird. So hopefully people, if, if you're interested in keeping up and watching this stuff, that is, um, then you can just go to the JewelsWatchman.com website, which sounds obnoxious that I say my own name in third person that way. But anyway, um, but yeah, that'd be cool if people go there if you want. If you are interested in, in keeping up with this and making comments, then you could all um, add it to uh, to that one place, which would be really neat. So, uh, yeah, so uh, what I want to talk about is kind of different phases of um, game development, you know, um, I don't know, I mean, obviously professional people that may be watching this, which I'm sure there are none of, because, uh, yeah, <laughs> but if you are interested in kind of behind the scenes or some of the stuff with game design or game development, um, uh, there are many ways of kind of approaching uh, the development of a game, you know, the naming of phases and how long each phase should be, and even what you do in those phases. Um, I mean, I guess the gaming industry is still so young that um, there really isn't uh, an established kind of set of uh, labeling of anything, really. I mean, like I talked about before, with you know, the game designer role, um, some people are still referring uh, to programmers as game designers. Very strange. So anyway, um, so anyway, so what? So what's cool? Uh, an example in case, case in point is our next game that we're, um, we're going to be starting soon once we've finished up with Moon. Um, uh, we'll obviously start with the pre-production phase. So technically, right now, we're in the pre-pre-production phase, which is the funnest stage of it all, uh, where we get to just write down, you know, just words, sentences, just ideas, just random stuff, sky's the limit, you know, which is the, the best stage. Because um, uh, it's... It's uh, it's crazy because it, you know you may have a certain idea of what the game is going to be, but you allow yourself to kind of go, yeah, well that's kind of what we're aiming for, but let's just be free and open up and just put in all kinds of crazy ideas, you know, which may or may not fit what you're actually shooting for, because um, it may help inspire ideas that that do fit the original vision. Um, so uh, so we're in that phase now, which is really fun, the pre-pre-production phase. Um, like I say, where we're just writing down basic ideas, not, you know, just throwing things into the wind, real fun stuff. And then the next stage will be um, pre-production. Um, and that uh, is still a lot of fun. That's, that's crazy chaos time, a lot of fun. Um, and uh, and it's, it's uh, for us, you know, what we're gonna do in that phase is um, basically answer the major questions, you know, prove to ourselves that, yep, this, is, this works, this is a good idea, or that doesn't work, we won't do that. Um, and uh, for example, if you know, I I like to use I guess Mario 64 um, as an example, as it is such a game designer type game. Like if you were making a game like that, for example, um, you know, in the pre-production phase, or if we were making a game like that, anyway, how would we approach it? Which I'm sure is very differently um, from how uh, Nintendo did. But in the pre-production phase, what we would do is, um, you know, we'd already have an idea that cool, okay, it's going to be a type of game where. Um, the player's control set, the player package, as I call it, the the, the abilities of the player um, are very much uh, very exaggerated, just for gameplay's sake. So, but what's interesting with Mario is um, that is directly reflected in the environment. You know, you can uh, I think I've talked about this before. You know, you can backflip up and you can long jump, um, and that obviously requires that the environment has um, <clears throat> higher platforms at a certain height. They have to be positioned to take advantage of that move or gaps that you have to jump across. Um, so, um, you know, if we're doing a game like that, then obviously in that in the pre-production phase, you'd be figuring out, okay, cool, what um, what are those moves? You know, you may have like 50 moves that you kind of want to try and pull off, or ideas that you'd like to try. And, you know, um, maybe some of those ideas that maybe went into Mario Sunshine, for example, with jetpack. Who knows? 
Um, and uh, and you kind of sit down and figure out, okay, well, not only what are these moves, what are, you know, and how do they relate to gameplay and the environment and enemies and so on. What buttons are they going to be placed to, and um, you know, and how long is the long jump going to be? How high is the, the backflip going to be? Um, not only just uh, the gameplay, what feels right. Um, also the camera, you know, you don't want to go off screen, <laughs> you know, um, when you're doing it. Um, so if it needs to be really high and you try it and it goes off camera, then you have the de decision of, well, do we fix the camera to um, allow it to, to handle that or is that just too high? It's, you know, it's a balance, you know, you try and make it work. You know, you don't compromise the jump height because the camera doesn't work. We don't compromise the camera just because the jump high, jump, the jump is jumping high. You just try and figure it out. You try and figure out what's the best for the game and what works and uh, what's, uh, what's going to be the best experience for the player at the end of the day. So anyways, that's what we're going to be doing uh, next, is the pre-production phase for our game, which is not a Mario game, <laughs> um, which is going to be a lot of fun. So by the end of that, we hope to have um, a really good idea of what the game is, you know. Um, we should have a, a very playable uh, demo or level, or whatever you want to call it, a vertical slice, um, whatever, prototype, I mean, whatever you want to call it. Um, uh, where you'll have the player package pretty much nailed down and all the abilities and some enemies or environments or whatever um, whatever the player package you know extends to um, will be uh, present there to to expose what the game is you know to show what it is and test it out and prove it um, and then you have the production phase which is the biggest phase which in theory should just be uh, well not always the biggest phase but in, in, in our case this time it is um, where uh, uh, hopefully all of our effort in the pre-production phase will pay off. We're like, alright, cool, we know what we're doing, let's just do it. There'll still be some questions outstanding, there'll still be some things unknown. Um, <clears throat> you know, and we'll grow and, and change things as we go through production. But uh, for the most part, we should know what we're doing in that phase. And then, um, so it's a little less fun <laughs> than pre-production. I guess as you get further through the game development, it gets less fun. No, that's not true. Um, and then after production, you get to alpha. Which is a lot of fun, actually. Um, that's when you should be done with the game as far as feature complete. Um, and now you're just focusing on uh, tuning what you have. You know, all the ingredients are thrown in there. But do you have too much of this, not enough of that? Or, wow, it doesn't even have any of this. We need to put that in there or whatever. You just kind of pull things around until, uh, until it feels right. You know, whether it be pacing or difficulty, uh, fun, um, you know, whatever it is. And that, that that's... A critical stage right there. If you don't have alpha or what we call alpha and what we use it for tuning, then um, you know you'll, you'll probably end up with a pretty crap game um, because uh, you know you're so focused on on just getting the stuff in there all the way up until that point. Chances are it's not going to be you know perfect. You need to step back, have other people play it, you know, get some distance away from it, and see it, see it for what it is. Um, and uh, and then and then make changes accordingly, and then after that you go to beta. Um, or we'll go to beta, and that's when you're just fixing bugs really. Um, so creatively, um, you're done. I mean it's done, um, and you're just making sure it doesn't crash, doesn't break, um, and also um, uh, uh, what's the word? It has the standards for the for the the console. But, you know, if it's a Wii game, you know, Nintendo's uh, uh, standards, you know, you have to make sure things are labeled correctly, you know, if, you know, if it's, uh, well, for the DS, for example, um, you know, you have to call the uh, the control pad, the D-pad, or whatever people may call it, uh, this thing right here has to be called um, control pad with a little plus in front of it. I'll uh, display that there. Boink! See, so plus with a... Uh, the word control pad. So it has to be called that in the game, in the manual and everything. Um, or uh, other people will uh, be confused and Nintendo won't approve it. Um, and then you're done. Then you submit it. Then you're done. All right. So uh, I probably waffled on a little bit too long now. Um, so I'm going to cut it off because otherwise it's going to take uh, a long time to upload this video. <laughs> um, and I'll talk about some more um, riveting stuff later. All right. Thanks. Bye.